Oh, and so this is going to catch up a little bit. So welcome, guys, to the second master stream. And this, like I said last time, might be the second ever master stream of its kind. But we do these because as entrepreneurs and as business owners, um, one thing that you'll start to realize is that there is a lot of things that you can't do. And there's a lot of things that, a lot of shortcomings that you have. And so by surrounding yourself with other people and by surrounding yourself with people who are doing amazing things, you can not only learn uh, some of those skills and talents, but um, you can start to network and, and, and obviously, you know, uh, create those own things, you know, similar things in your business. So um, I've been doing these masterminds uh, regularly, you know, a couple times a week for the last several years, but we never really had Facebook Live and we never had this way to stream it. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm kind of really just excited to share with all of our audiences some of the great things that are working for you guys and um, how we can go out there and impact, you know, the world and, and obviously our businesses and, you know, ultimately live, you know, an incredible life ourselves. So welcome uh, to the call, everybody. I appreciate it. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, what's up? So I'm going to go around the horn and introduce everybody who's on. And if you guys are hopping on live, let us know, check in and uh, just drop a, you know, a hello and, and let us know. What's up, Tina? What's up, Jocelyn? Thanks on. for joining, ladies. Up top, we've got the uh, the sales gorilla, Landon Porter. And Landon is actually someone who I connected with early last year and who I resonated with so much because he was teaching people uh, such an essential skill. And he was teaching uh, uh, something that was so important for people who want to grow any type of business. And it's a skill that not a lot of people have. And I know he helps people who aren't those natural Grant Cardone people. They're not the people who aren't going to, you know, bang out hundreds and thousands of cold calls. And he really helps people to, to grow their business without what he calls being a douche canoe. So, uh, Lynn, thanks for, uh, for hopping on. But Share with me, if you can, what is the essence of, of the shift that you talk about? Because there's a very, very big shift that you um, find is important when someone is selling stuff through social media or selling stuff online. How free am I with language on this show? Let's go. Yes. <laughs> You're not going to offend me. Yes. So here's the biggest thing that most people have a problem with who are not good naturally at sales. They're trying to be something that they're not. Fundamentally, what we teach people how to do is be your weird ass self and own that shit hundred percent and leverage that and understand who you are through a little self-awareness. So you can determine who the fuck it is you want to work with and then just be yourself. If you have the ability to help somebody get a result and you can express that through who you are, you naturally attract the people that are the right kind of client for you. So I don't call high ticket stuff under about 10 K. So two, three, five grand a month, two, three, five grand a quarter, whatever it is and high ticket. And that's essentially what we do. We help coaches, consultants, and service-based business owners find their ideal clients for them because here's the thing. Ain't nobody got a sales problem. Everybody has a prospecting problem. You're trying to put a square peg in a round hole. It just doesn't work. If you can be yourself and attract the right kind of people, that sales conversation is fucking easy. It's really four little pieces. Hi, this is what I can do. What is it that you need? How is it that that works? Cool. Here's how it goes. That's it. So it's interesting to me as a sales guy to see people struggle trying to do this thing because they're trying to talk to the wrong people. Does that cover it? I dig it. I love it. So I want to throw that now to Marshall because you, one thing I love about Marshall is Marshall's about selling in advance, right? Like really, you know, that's what the brand does is help someone to sell in advance. So Marshall, in regards to sales, how does branding, how, how does that, like, where, where does that come into play in regards to actually, you know, selling something, uh, you know, digitally or, you know, through social? Yeah, for sure, man. Well, like it's a couple things that work here, but first, like what my whole thing is this year is like my little clickbait is like, um, sales and marketing are dead. Like that, that's, that's, that's yesteryear and everything I think moving forward really comes down to branding. And the way that I'd like to break it down simply for people, to, simplest for people to understand is like when you walk into a grocery store, right? And you go in to buy dish soap and you're standing in the aisle, there's not like 15 different representatives from each 15 of the dish soaps. They're trying to sell you their, their brand, like their, their product. Like the brand is pre-sold based on the branding. So you walk in and the branding is what's doing the selling. The branding is what's doing the marketing. And you look at like really great brands like Apple who, yes, yeah, is Samsung better? The technology is better. Like, yeah, it's a better, pro it's a that. better product. 
Well, maybe not. I'm an Apple guy. I have everything. <laughs> I'm Apple. an Apple guy too, man. But, but like, you know, the branding on it is why people love it. So for me, I go, okay, well, what does that really mean? And how can I apply that to me and use social media and a mobile phone? So it's funny because I can, I, I love sitting here listening to all of you guys and like everything I'm going to learn from all, you guys are all like executing at such a high level and you guys know what you're doing. And that's so cool. But what I want people to understand that are watching that might not relate to somebody like Jeremy or like Landon, like these, like these beasts of entrepreneurs is that you can still make money just simply by showing up and being authentic and being yourself and sharing your story. If you've followed my journey, I've pivoted like 15 times over the last year that I've started my personal brand, but I've been able to quit my job and I've been able to use my branding to sell products on the back end um, because I've built a relationship with my audience because they know, like, and trust me. It's like what Landon said, you know, it, it just show up and be yourself. If you're weird, be weird. If you're fucking like Landon, who reminds me of Andy Priscilla and the Dollar Beard Club guy, <laughs> it's dope. He's like an animal of one of those. It's, uh, I just love it. Just show up and be yourself, man. And that's really what my thing is, uh, Hector. Just branding, branding yourself, man. So, so when you, that kind of leads me into, you know, Jeremy, your, your new, your new kind of venture project, company group, everything is command your brand, right? Is that, so yeah, what I, what I love about you is you now, what you kind of understand at a really deep level is how do you mobilize this, this brand, which is a, i when I tell people is that brands are like communities. Now, if you can look at your brand or your comp, your whatever as a, as a community, well, now you've got people to mobilize. Now you, now you can get shit done. Now you've got an army behind you. And I think, Jeremy, what you're really great at, whether you know it or not, is leveraging and deploying that audience to kind of going back to what we're talking about, like, you know, buy our stuff, to buy our products, to in whatever it is that we're trying to get them to do. So why for you is like commanding your brand and through, through audience building, why is that something that you feel is, is so valuable for an entrepreneur? Well, let me, let me just say here, first of all, man, like, like I, and the thing I end up talking to people the most about is, you know, how many leads am I going to get from this podcast? What's the ROI of going on this podcast? And honestly, it's freaking bullshit, man. Like if you're looking at how many leads am I going to get from this episode? How many leads am I going to get from this show? You're short sighted as fucking hell. Like it's a big, it's a huge problem. It's about audience building and relationship building. So you should be thinking with that of, you know, kind of working it backwards. Like, what do I want people to do? Um, so for me, it's, we take a story, we take a call to action message and story, which is working it backwards. You start with the story, which is you to a message, to a call to action, where you want people to go needs to be the main thing, but that also needs to work into relationship building. How, once that person opts in for something, can you add value to them every single day? You know, for me, um, when somebody opts into my list, it's a five day email sequence with a video they're getting every day, but I'm also at the same time offering them a chance to do something like that's, you know. Grab a sales call with me and we can chat about it. Grab a marketing call and we can chat about it. You need to really think about building a community around things rather than let's get one or two leads and then I'm screwed. You know what I mean? Like that's what you really have to be thinking with. So huge. Yeah, I think it's, it's important. And I, I even find myself, you know, one of my students in my program, Ooh, uh, he, he got, a, uh, he got a, a, a little shout out in a group. And so now he's getting bombarded because he's having some success. And he's like, how do you get anything done? You know, it's like, how does that happen? And it's like, there's those moments where do we respond to this message? Do we actually take the time to, to help this person and, and kind of this balance of, of, uh, of value and stuff? But I'm, I'm curious to see, hear your insight, Hannah, because for you, it, we go back to the beginning, right? All of this stuff, your brand is great. You're, you know, being able to be yourself is awesome. You know, if you're able to leverage and have a call to action, like Jeremy talked about, like how even more powerful, but what Hannah, you really allow people to do is that it like, like figure out what that is and like figure out even like, how does that, how does that turn into a business? I have so many people who they're like, this is what I'm passionate about. And like, I want to do th like this for the rest of my life. But they don't, they don't see how that turns into a business, or how that translates into a business. For, so for you, what are some of the things that you kind of help your audience do when it comes to, you know, going back to the beginning and, and packaging um, that whole thing? Well, I think we're all, you guys are totally hitting on that what customers buy or what clients buy is not the eight week program or your offer. People buy what you can give to them and their dream. And so I coach my clients, like, let's go make relationships first and then build your offer and your service and your program afterwards. And the packaging will come really simply when you actually understand their heaven and their hell. And you just, it, it's just 
stupid natural that you can build a bridge as you show up as an authentic person who actually wants to help people or make a change in the world as opposed to, yeah, I need X amount of leads so I can charge X and equal Y. Yeah, being, I mean, it's the packaging will come once you really get to know what people are um, wanting and needing. I love it. So for those of you guys who are hopping on, let us know who's, uh, who's here if you're catching this live. Um, I'm curious for you guys, after hearing a little bit about that, what, what stands out to you? Um, you know, I, I hear some, some similarities and some trends, but what, are, what stands out to you? Is there like, like, like a, a thing that people should be doing no matter what when they're in digital marketing or when they're building their business online or through social media? Is there one thing that they should definitely be doing? Well, I, I mean, listen to what everybody just said. I mean, everybody has, everybody just said the same thing. Like, so if you're watching this, understand that we're all using the same success principles online. We're just all doing it in our own way. But like, that's what's so awesome. Like everybody just told their story. I'm like, this is badass. And I wish more people realized that it, it, the simplicity of it, like it's not easy, but it's simple. Just pick what you want to talk about. Show up and make content. It's a TV channel. You're the TV show. And then build a commercial that sells something on the back end. Like don't overcomplicate it. Marshall just said one key word there, principles, right? So I don't know, I don't know the age range of the people on here, but I'm 40, right? And I don't really consider myself a millennial, though I can speak to that demo. I was a sales guy for a long time, like hardcore sales guy. And the culture of our global society has changed. We're no longer interested in being sold or marketed to, right? Welcome to the relationship economy. Guess what? That's all based on principles. And those who succeed are the people that have the ability to really, this is who I am, like it or not, right? And actually relationship first. And that's essentially what all of us just said. It, I find it fascinating. Hmm. Uh, we yeah. Go ahead, Hannah. Well, and just to build on this, like what should you be doing? You should be taking care of yourself and be curious about other people. You know, when I think about success principles, I think about my mindset, like Marshall's talking about, it's not marketing or sales strategies. It's like, what do you love doing? What can you give to other people? And like, are you in a place of service? That's what you need to be doing to make sales. <laughs> yeah, I, it's funny because I always tell people, people always ask me, oh, what's what's your day like today? And then I'm like, oh, I'm just going to work all day. And they're like, what? Like, you know, I'm just going to work. And then, then, and then if I think about it, I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to hang out at home in my pajamas with my dogs, take a nap whenever I We're want. <laughs> like, like then, then we get to go into all of the amazing stuff. But, <laughs> but there's so much before that. So what, what do people miss? Because I think that well, I, here, let me, let me, let me just say to that real quick, Hector, because this is what I think a lot of people screw up on is there's two things you need to be looking at. One thing is you need to be getting some press start local because you really need to be thinking about that because you need to show some social proof in what you're doing. And the biggest thing too, is being yourself, but also differentiating at the same time. Cause like, especially in the podcast world, how many podcasts out there do you see that are trying to be John Lee Dumas? Every single one of them. If I hear somebody else introduce a show, say, hey, fill in the gaps in that intro, I'm going to shoot myself. Like he needs, he's doing it his way, do it your way. Because if you don't differentiate, you're promoting your space instead of yourself. You're promoting everybody else in your category rather than yourself. So you got to find out how you're different, man. Yeah, I, I just want to, I'll jump in real quick too. I love that, Jeremy. And, and for anybody watching, like that's the whole, that's the whole concept of branding. Everybody wants actually contract like go smaller singular like that's the idea of branding you guys literally you could probably ask jeremy you could ask me give me tell me what you do and i'll tell you a creative way to like say to position yourself because that's all it is it's just like i, I do personal branding right but I, I was a live branding like it's just it's how you position yourself go small go small niche down be be, be unique Landon, how does, how does niching down play a part? And because you talk about being yourself. So when, when, when you think about like differentiating, is that, I mean, how does that play into, into your process? There's only one person on this planet that can be exactly who the fuck you are, period. And there's nobody that can do you better than you, right? I get this a lot in our community. Yeah, but like I'm bland and I'm brown paper bag and I'm like normal and I'm like, yeah, but you know what? Your personality speaks to the people that are bland and brown paper bag and normal about the thing that you do 
better than anybody else can. Mm -hmm. And if you are actually, here's the thing, right? I'm a little bit older than a lot of the people that I work with. So for me, it's just easy. Like I don't want to deal with people that are a headache. So by being me, the people that don't like that go away. And the people that do, I get along with. It's amazing. This relatability thing, right? Salespeople manufacture relatability. And where I came from, you got a client and you had them for a long period of time. Eventually, you're not going to be that thing that you, that mask that you put on. So by being yourself, you're automatically differentiating yourself. If you're being yourself, not trying to be someone else. So I totally agree with Jeremy. Can I, can I piggyback off that landing? Cause you're totally right. Like I had a guy call me this morning um, for some like um, invite only community type thing. And he's like, and it just felt like he wasn't actually communicating to me. Like it felt like he was trying to sound so fake and so rehearsed that it was almost like I was listening to a recording, but it was actually a person talking to me. And it's really weird. It's like that communication doesn't hit you. You know what I mean? Yep. Totally. So how do we, how, so how do, I always come back to like the, the, I know Marshall hates this, right? But it's like the how, right? It's like, all right. So, okay. So, so now what motherfuckers? Like, like now, now what do we do? Right. We, yes, I agree. So how do, how do we start building these things? Or like, for me, you know, in sales, a big part of it was just like, was just doing it. And I find that so many conversations, it's like, hey, he, like, like you got to just do it. So, so I think, I think it starts before that though, right? Because like, this is what I found over the last year of selling courses. Like I'll literally give somebody the exact step-by-step, -step, exactly how to build a brand, exactly how to run a Facebook ad, exactly how to set up sales funnels. And they, and they weren't, and they weren't repeating the success. Right. So then I had to take a look at it and I'm like, well, what is it? What is it about this that I'm still missing? Because this is the fucking, this is the exact, this is the formula. And what I realized is that it starts so much more before that. Right. Cause it really comes down to mindset and I'm not to get all woo woo, but you can tell when you're vibrating on a higher level than somebody else. And I don't mean that in a weird way because there's just like, there's just no connection. You can tell. So like, if you walk up to somebody and you're like, oh yeah, I make money from social media, on my phone. And they're like, oh, like, yeah. I, I get that, right? Then they're probably on the same frequency. But what I kept finding is that a lot of people aren't even awoke to that idea. Like they just don't understand. So I think it starts, and you guys keep hearing me say it though, was mindset. Like it really does. And it, it comes on the number one principle, which is being self-aware. Just just asking yourself, what is it that I'm good at? What do I love doing? If I could only, if I could only bet on one thing, if I would only get paid for the rest of my life for one thing, what would I bet on? And then whatever that is, just fucking pick your phone like this. And then create content and talk about it and be yourself and people will start to follow you. Just start there. What's interesting is we haven't mentioned a whole lot of tactics on this call. Like these, these calls, uh, it's always interesting that when you get five, five successful people, you know, and all in their own kind of vein, they, the, the same kind of principles come up, but it's never really like the tactics, you know, it's never really those, those kind of things. Tactics. Anyways, short yeah. Sorry to, sorry to interrupt you. Here's the thing you're asking, like people are wanting to know how to do the thing. Guess what? Forget about the tactics. The fucking tactics that work today don't work next week. If, if you're taught a tactic, it works for a period of time. You've been given a fish. You need to learn how to go fish. Mm -hmm. And that's not tactics. Now people have a, a, a misunderstanding of the terminology. There's a difference between a tactic and a technique, Right. What's Marshall done for the last year? He got on Facebook Live and he put himself out there, right? That's not a tactic. That's a technique, mm -hmm. right? Whereas opposed to those people that like jump on every single social media change ever. And like, you know, if Facebook changes one ad thing about crypto, they're all going to die. Like, you know what I mean? Like they, they look at every single one of these like things and don't stay with the mainline strategy. You know what I mean? Well, one of the things that I, you know, I love the fact that all of you guys came on. And um, once again, if you guys are, are catching this live or even you made it this far on the replay, Jesus, let us know if you're still here. Um, we, you're an amazing person already. But I always, I have tons of people who have reached out to me and they're like, hey, can I come and use your platform? Can I come and like do this? And it's like, my number one thing is, are you creating content for yourself? Like, are you actually putting stuff out there for yourself? Because if you're not that that alone is is kind of a, 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 a I think a differentiator if if this is what we're talking about right now there are lots of people who can build a brand who and build a business without necessarily needing to do Facebook lives or needing to be this public figure 
So can anyone speak to that? Because maybe, I, you know, I'm always playing devil's advocate, but maybe there's someone who's saying, well, yeah, Landon, but I don't want to have a, a, a raving group of 5,000 lunatics who soak up every single Facebook live I do. And you know what, Marshall, I Why don't want to do. Then take, take your ass to work at nine o'clock. <laughs> like, take, take your ass to work at nine o'clock. You get off at five. You'll be off on Saturdays and Sundays. Like you, you, you won't have retirement. Like that's cool. It's no right or wrong, but yeah, just take your ass to work. Well, yeah. People have to realize that. Oh, go ahead. Well, I think what, like what I wanted to say to Hector's point, And like, I think Marshall will agree that like, it doesn't have to be a group or Facebook live, right? It comes back to what we talked about before is like, find the things that wake you up and that are true to you. Like if running a group, a Facebook group isn't true to you, like find the strategy that is yours. And it's going to come from asking those questions that we're talking about. Like, what legacy do I want to leave? How do I want this to look? What are my dream life non-negotiables? <laughs> like, again, that self-awareness is what will allow you to find the strategy and the tactics that work for this month and you'll be adaptable and flexible because you know yourself you have to create content like a motherfucker like you have to like because you have to understand the internet's massive right you can't like do like two blog posts and be like why did nobody find me it's all about you know keeping in line with what your purpose is and making sure it's streamlined but creating content like in the last two years i've done um over 100 posts on blog posts on my own site been on over 100 podcasts produce 400 podcasts and then written 50 articles on other sites. Like you need to create content like a motherfucker. You need to give people ways to find you and also consume you in the different ways they can consume you. Maybe they like video, maybe they like audio, maybe they like the written word. You need to find out how your content can basically change to how they can receive it. I got to talk to this just for a second. First, who is it that we're speaking to? Are we talking to people that know their craft? They're good at their thing. Are we talking to people that don't know what their craft is? Two totally mm -hmm. different demos, right? Point. So to speak to to speak to both of that, because this is exactly what we teach, the content mm -hmm. thing. We've got 10,000 people. I've got over 1,000 hours of Facebook Lives in my group in the last 12 months, right? Yes, for some of us, we have to create a fuck ton of content. There's between 8 and 12 pieces of pillar content that your specific market needs to see and be able to go through to understand if you're the person that can get them the result that they want. And here's what everybody misses with the tactic thing. On all of these social platforms, there's a free piece and a paid piece. The way we get our message in front of our market is the paid piece. It's not near as hard, as expensive as most people think. But once they've found you, it might not be the right time for them. So that continuing to create content thing is the thing that continues to bring them in, just like an email list, right? Now, with all of that said, we've got clients that have five or six pieces of content and they're fucking killing it. Mm -hmm. Now, you got to play to your strengths. Me and you doing Facebook Lives and podcasts, that's our strength. That's the thing I can do. I can write, but man, I can do this thing, right? Mm -hmm. The most important aspect to all this is if you actually know what your thing is and you know what your craft is, it doesn't matter where you create content. It doesn't matter where you show up until you know where your market's going to see you could be LinkedIn, could be Facebook, could be YouTube, could be a podcast, right? Sales marketing. Could, well, could Landon, I, I have a point to this that you may agree with. Let me just ask you real quick is um, I think one of the biggest things people mess up with is like, like, let's say for example, a podcast, right? You can take that audio and you can use it in so many different ways. You can transcribe it. You can use it as a post. You can, I think people try to create too many unique pieces of content rather than figuring out how that one piece of content can be consumed in different fashions. I don't, is that something you agree with? Totally, completely and 100%. And here's the deal. It's not just creating content, it's creating content. So I've been saying this a lot lately, test, adjust, test, adjust, test, adjust, mm -hmm. right? You put something out there and you see how it lands with your market, right? And if it does well, then you take that and you expand on it. But it's always... If we're talking about people that are wanting to let others obligate them with money to get them a result, what we're talking about is selling something, mm -hmm. right? If you're going to sell something, you need to understand those pieces that Hannah said a minute ago. You got to understand what it is that they want, like what's going to resonate with them, what's going to get them to your thing, right? If you understand those, they're pillar pieces of content. All the rest of it's just conversation around those main points, generally between eight and 12 for most of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so good. And that's the thing. I mean, that I, people like 
I'm the lazy, I'm the hardest working lazy dude you guys are ever going to meet. Like, why do I go live every day? Because like, I get all of my content in one live. Like, that's it. That one content is broken down for Instagram, uh, Twitter, you know, blog, whatever, email copy. So uh, I think that, I think the thing that is though, I always want people to, to realize is that we're talking all business and entrepreneurship right now, but if you're watching and you're going, oh, well, I'm not into business or entrepreneurship, you guys, this works for fucking anything. Like it works for anything. Like if you're the best fucking fried chicken maker in your town, because you have the best damn recipe of all time, like you could literally start a YouTube channel about your fucking chicken. Like it can be anything. You're probably sitting there going, oh, well, what, what am I supposed to sell? Like you have to realize that information is the number one commodity ever. Right. So if you know something like say, I'll just say life coach, got Tony Robbins in my head, but like, yeah, if you're a life coach, you might not be Tony Robbins, but you're you and you are two days ahead of somebody else or a week ahead of somebody or a book ahead of somebody else, man. So like, don't overthink this shit, whatever, whatever your job is that you're trying to get away with, get away from now, whatever you lose your attention to frequently, like focus on that probably, mm -hmm. and then just go all in on it and just make content. Like these guys are saying, like Jeremy and Lander are saying, they're, they're giving you guys a step-by-step. -step. Like I said, Quick. I get Question worked up about here. something like it's simple. I'm curious. Reese, uh, Reese, thanks for hopping on and a great question. If you guys want to ask the panel any questions here, now's the time. Uh, we got a few, you know, a little bit of time left here. And uh, John says we're awesome. But Reese says, what do you think about native content or curating? He says that obviously both is good, but what's the ratio of creating to curating? Is there, is there any, any thoughts on that? I, I go all original. I know, I know that the numbers are like, you're supposed to do this and that, but like, it's my platform and my channel. So it's not like I'm stubborn or prideful. Like when I see something that like, like that, I genuinely that like Dennis, you, for example, I was just chatting with him, Facebook, yes. like genius. Right. And I, when I see Dennis's stuff, like I share all of Dennis's stuff. Cause I genuinely like the world needs to see this, but just, just the fact of just like, Oh, every third post is like, no, nah, I don't, I don't, I don't. I mean, I'm not like, you know, some huge influencer yet, but that's just my own preference. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think what a lot of people don't, um, don't utilize enough. And I know I didn't cause, cause a lot of times it takes a team, right? Similarly, I do Facebook lives cause I didn't want to edit things. I don't want to sit there in production. I want to fucking hit the button and then the green, the red light goes on and then I go. And then afterwards it's there and it's like, and I'm done. And then um, what I've, what now I've done is I'm taking, like you said, taking it down and throwing it up on Medium and then cutting it up and putting it up on Instagram. And, you know, we're, we're starting to, you know, get some YouTube traction. So, so all these kind of things, but like, like you said, the, the hallmark was, was the Facebook live. So thanks Reese for, um, for I think you just do video because you want people to see your damn hat. Well, yes, of course. <laughs> I've, I've dealt with insecurity my entire life. So I'm like, wait a minute. 30, almost 40 people want to watch me right now. This is great. This makes up for all of the shit I didn't get in high school. Um, so absolutely. Uh, there is some vanity that's, that's involved in it. But if I, if I didn't say that, I'd be lying. Um, so Shannon asks, what kind of videos can she do for her home organizational business? So what if someone has a weird kind of, I don't want to say weird, Shannon, hopefully that didn't offend you at all. A, a different, uh, maybe they're not selling courses. Maybe they're not selling, you know, consulting. Does content, does branding still play a role in some of those more maybe tr quote unquote traditional or, or maybe non digitally traditional businesses? Absolutely. So I actually think I've shared this exercise with Shannon before. Um, but what I love to do is to think about people's heaven and their hell, like I mentioned. And so once you really get curious about your ideal clients and you know what their pain points are, how they talk about their home organization, what they wish they could achieve in their home or, you know, whatever you want to work with, get their exact words. And you guys, it's so simple now. Like everyone's words are everywhere. <laughs> like join a Facebook group or stay at home moms or join a Facebook group for millennials. Like, I don't know who you really want to work with, but you'll start to see like, wow, no one has a clue about X, Y, Z. And then respond again, respond to the market needs. to what your clients are asking for, looking for, um, and then make lives or recorded videos that speak to their wants and needs. Yeah, I think a lot of businesses do that. You have you have some stuff on that, Marshall? 
Well, I just think that that was excellent, Hannah. I think that's amazing. And I was just thinking what you should do is like, you should find a friend that has like a busy ass li living room with a bunch of kids and you should ask him that you guys should go shoot like a little commercial and, and like make it like shoot it and make people feel like that emotion of like, oh fuck, my kid's room is, or my toy room is dirty, it's messy. Like things are always all over the place. I wish there was a solution. People are like, make them feel that pain. Like if you shot like a 60 second commercial that was all edited together that showed that. And then you flash like uh, home or, or organize your home SD or something across the screen, like for a book now, like that would resonate target moms. And you would, you would book appointments nonstop. <laughs> yeah. And when you use what moms see every day and the words that they use, you get yes. that. Oh, that's me. Yes. I need that. Yes. Perfect. Bingo. Yes. Dream life. <laughs> well, this is why highly paid copywriters are so highly paid, right? What's the, what's the one key in all of that? The market's language, mm -hmm. right? We, most of us go through a phase where we call the result the way we call it, right? You want to get more clients. I want to get more clients. It's not their language about their actual issue, right? And going and doing the market research and the recon is watching them in the wild to see what their actual language is about that. So you can speak back to them, the result that you can provide in their own language. Mm -hmm. That's, that's so important too. Cause I know like in the past, I've done a lot of like digital marketing for dentists, uh, not something I do anymore, but we did in the past. And like, um, they don't call it sales because they hate the word sales and dentistry. They call it case acceptance. So you have to be able to like speak the correct language of it um, and write it in the correct way, because if people can't get what you're talking about, and if you actually don't understand your target market, you, you're, you're lost. It's like people that try to launch a product to a market they know nothing about. It happens so much. Um, and I think that that's, that's a big step because I find that a lot of rookie entrepreneurs, they end up saying, this is what the market needs. And, and that may or may not be true, but you need to figure out what the market wants and you need to sell them what they want. And, and if that means that you give them what they need, then that's huge. Um, so that's great. Guys, if you guys have any final questions, um, throw those down there. We've, we've got, you know, actually we got a little bit of time um, here as well. So I want to, I'm curious about what you guys are, are thinking about going forward. Like, I, like I'm curious if there is a, if there's something that stands out as uh, one thing that you're going to really focus on for 2018, or I know we talked a little bit about mindset, but uh, I'm curious about where you're, maybe individual attention is or where you guys are, are telling your audience, Hey, this is the thing that is either working right now, or this is the thing that you should uh, be starting to adopt. Um, for those who are, are out there looking, you know, for that, uh, that kind of, once again, that, that, that tactic, right. Maybe, maybe, or maybe not, but um, what are some things specifically for this year, quarter one that you find is being, um, you know, is, is particularly helpful for people who are looking to build an online business? Same things that were good in quarter four last year. It's those same, those same things you need to consistently be doing over time. And like tactics are great, but I'm always somebody that I'm going to stick to the same pattern and keep pushing with that and add more fuel on the fire. So that's all anybody that listens to me knows that's exactly what I'm talking about. Find something that works. Don't try something. Don't find something untried. So I think, I think ultimately what, 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 I think we're getting to is that we need to pick something that we're going to build though. Right. Mm -hmm. We're going to need We're going to need to pick something, whether that is a, a podcast or a Facebook lives, or we're going to create a 60 second video commercial or whatever it is. Right. And so, um, so I think that that, I think it maybe is, is getting, getting started is super helpful. So I don't know. I, I just kind of want to throw it out to you guys um, to maybe share some insight in what's, worked for you in your journey, or maybe there was a turning point. Yeah, I, I, let's, let's throw it to that because I know that there's always kind of big moments in, in careers. And like, you know, there's, there's the moment when, you know, Michael Jordan, like, you know, when he got cut, like that was like a defining moment. And then, you know, it ended up going this way. So was there a particular challenge, obstacles, some sort of thing that went in the moment seemed like was terribly wrong, but ended up being, you know, a saving grace? Um, in terms of your business or actually turned into some sort of lesson or, or silver lining? Anything that comes to mind? I definitely have like my loud and clear moment. If anyone's listened to me before, you might know this part of my story. Um, I was fired from my dream job after a month and like letting go of the stability. I went from being a college advisor to working for a startup that was going to bring me out to San Francisco and then they fired me. And after a month. And I distinctly remember the founder of this startup saying, 
Hannah, your dream life can still be your real life. Cause I said that all the time, <laughs> even before I was doing this. And I was like, yeah, but this really sucks. <laughs> like I have no income, no job, nowhere to live because that was all included. Um, and so that was like, this sucks and I'm going to prove you right. You know? And like, yeah. All right. No other choice. I'm going to go figure it out. And I'm going to stand on my principles. What I know I like as part of my personality and that is making dream life real life for more people than just myself. And so that moment, that firing has absolutely catalyzed me to help other people take ownership of your income because mm. that sucked <laughs> and it doesn't have to be that way. We don't have to depend on others and dream life can be real life. Well, that connects really well for me for like, um, like my first attempt at a podcast was, uh, called rock your life. And I was like this life coach or some shit like that. It was horrible. Um, and I really, it was all about serving me. It wasn't about helping anybody. So it tanked. It didn't do very well. I quit after about 60 days. And when I started, um, you know, towards the middle of 2015, when I started the current show I have, I was like, all right, who do I want to learn from? And who do I want to teach others from? So when I went out and found the hundred experts that I most admired and talked to those people and tried to help them teach other people, that's when it really mattered and made a difference. But it was when I was trying to serve myself and not others, I was kind of like, Dude, I, I got, I'll, I'll come in after that, Jeremy, because this is something that I just recently dealt with. Um, and it's so much the same thing, bro. And I didn't even realize it is that for the last year, I broke into entrepreneurship through uh, Ty Lopez, a program. And like, all I learned was like, I need to keep asking more questions and keep learning. But I, I thought that entrepreneurship and selling entrepreneurship and how to do the, the marketing and how to do the branding. I thought that that's what I was doing. But this whole entire last year, I was like, I was lying to myself and I knew I was, and I, I felt like a fraud the whole year. And even though I was changing people's lives and they were having success and people were getting value from what I was doing, I wasn't being true to myself because I was self-serving. I wanted to go for the money, even though everybody, my entire life said, Marshall, I get inspiration and motivation from you. Like people have been telling my whole life what I should have been doing. But the reason I didn't stay true to myself is because I couldn't figure out how to sell motivation. I couldn't figure out how to sell inspiration. So for this whole last year, I sold, I sold and I branded and I made content every fucking day about things I didn't even care about. Like I don't care about branding. And that's what you guys are going to start to see. Like, this is the first time I actually ever talked about this yet. Uh, I don't care about that anymore. Oh. Like I need to start showing up authentically for myself and doing the things that really make my soul come to life, which is like giving people the power of a mindset change to let them change their life so they can learn from Jeremy and they can learn from Landon and Hannah and Hector. So my thing is like, you guys don't, don't do it for the money. I'm still not where I, I don't care how I'm going to make the money now. Like, I don't care about that. I have money. Like, I just want to make sure I'm being true to myself. So I'm telling you guys, I said it before, but self-awareness, if you're watching this, mm -hmm. become self-aware of what you want. Don't worry about the money. If you show up every day as yourself, I promise you, I swear to God, the money will come. You have to believe in yourself fully. And I fucked that up for a whole year and lived completely out of alignment. Be your weird ass self and own that shit 100%. Is that what you're saying? Interesting. It's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> right? Um, loud and clear moment. I like that. Um, I finally was able to get myself out of sales after 15 years. The last thing I wanted to hear was, can you teach me how to do that? And I had enough people like drag me back into that thing after spending all of 2016 building a parenting thing with my wife. And it was amazing. And this is the thing that I could do to serve that people want from my perspective, right? I think at the end of the day, it comes down to one of two things. Find a thing that you could spend all of your time doing if it meant you ate peanut butter and jelly seven days a week, but you were the happiest person on the planet and go be a media company about that thing. Mm -hmm. Or one way or the other, generally it's finding a marketplace that you want to serve that you can with your knowledge or whatever, and ask them by not asking them yet, watch them in the wild, see what they're talking about, gather some data, and then start the conversation with them and then see how you can help them. It's one of two paths. And I want to go back to a, a thing that Marshall said a few minutes ago. Um, yes, we're all basically entrepreneurs and business people. And most of our clients do that. But it doesn't matter if you're talking fried chicken or, you know, the 87 Celtics jerseys. If you've got a thing that you're talking about at the end of that, there's a way to support you doing it. 
Yeah, they're for sure not called the Celtics, but that's uh, that's. Totally- I'm not a sports guy. I know that's totally fine. I want you to own that shit. <laughs> totally, that's the guy 100%. wearing the panda hat. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> I think that's that's so funny, and, and a lot of people have, have mentioned me like, "Oh, what's the story behind the panda hat?" And I was like, "I I just one day threw it on, and people liked it, and I put through, it. and then you know there was one day where I didn't have it, and people asked about it, and so." You know, sometimes it's like like what Landon said, like test and and change and or what you know. What were you what were you saying, Landon? You, you, it was good. It was like test and iterate or something. Shift, test and shift, test adjust, test adjust, test, test adjust. adjust. Yeah, because so many people are 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 afraid to put like put stuff out there, right? Like I, I've realized that that was a big a big <laughs> hump that I had to get over. Was like 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 I can't tell you how many times early in the career where I had the live ready to go. I even had the description, and I was like. Okay, you know what? I got to clean my room, or like, you know what? Oh, I got to do that thing, and I would find every reason not to do it. And so I kind of sometimes I had to like trick myself sometimes into, mm. you know, into doing it. But that that fear of putting yourself out there, I think, is a is a big thing. So, so where does that play, right? Where does that pl- where does where does that that insecurity or that fear? Um, because I think that that for me was a big driver of of, mm. of why I wanted to get better. But it was also something that was this continual you know limitations so what do you say when someone is is afraid to do all this stuff we're talking about do it action yeah take action yeah so something jeremy said and what hector just said reminds me of something i was so grateful i was taught early and that is your first iteration your first try better embarrass you because Mm -hmm. if it isn't awful and you don't feel like it was so silly you waited way too long and so we talked about this last week, feel the fear and do it anyway. Seek embarrassment because that is where you're going to learn. That is where you're going to grow. And staying in your own head is just miserable for everyone. And it's like a disservice to what the world could be seeing and hearing from you. So, so, but, so true, Hannah. Yeah, anyway. Go ahead, Jeremy. Well, no, I was going to say like how many times like you're sitting there and you got to make a phone call and you're nervous as shit that you got to pick up this phone, but you know that that person on the other end of the phone could pay you to do a service for them. And I think so many times we're scared to do that thing that we need to do the most. So if you go out and do that thing and just be okay with being scared as hell, man, and just ask yourself, who's got my money. Right. I, I, I like that. And I, I think that's like one of the biggest things There's two parts. To this is like, the first one is that, um, you know, just take action. Like when I find when I'm scared to do something, when I just take the action, even, even when I fail, like it's the anxiety is not a failure is not that bad. Like when you take action, the, the, the fear goes away. Like you realize that, Oh, it was nothing really to be scared at. And that becomes a habit, the more that you do it. And that, that really applies to anything, but there's a, I just got to throw this in there because it's one of my favorite things to, to, to teach, but there's a Colin Paul does this interesting. He talks about this interesting thing about when to get started and he calls it the 40, 70 rule. And basically he says that if you, it's like applies to war. And he's like, if you wait to attack, until you have at least 70% of the information or more, you'll have waited too long and your enemy will have come up and they would have you know, sacked your, your camp. But if you try to strike before you know at least 40% of the information, then you're probably ill-prepared. So when it comes to getting started, one, take action, two, ask more questions and, and just keep learning every day. Yeah, there's this constant <clears throat> level of, and it's, it's hard as an entrepreneur because in a job, it's like, okay, do this thing. And then we're going to train you for like two weeks. And then after that training, you're just going to do that thing forever <laughs> until we, we decide that we're going to give you new barking orders. But as an entrepreneur, it's like, okay, we're going to learn the thing then we're going to do it. Okay. Then you're going to learn something else. And you're going to do it. And, and this, this constant, like this constant improvement and this constant learning. And I think for me, like I naturally enjoy that aspect of it. And I enjoy kind of challenging myself, but what you know is is there a right way to 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 get better is there a right right way to improve at these skills or does someone just i mean how does someone approach that that kind of process well to your point there man you talked about learning something new um if you're ever thinking about expanding what you're doing if you're learning something new and you're not writing it down so you can train somebody else on that um you're stupid because you need to have everything you're doing in your business written up because it's the only way you're ever going to grow and scale is if you could teach somebody else to do it exactly like you. Otherwise, you're stuck with it. Mm. Mm. The baby's afraid to learn how to walk. <laughs> yeah. Right? They try and they fall and they try and they fall and they try and they fall and eventually they're walking and pretty soon they're running and then they're jumping. Right? We get 
scared at a certain point to do new things or try new things because we're concerned with what other people think of us. Mm. Yeah. Right. So true. So true. So let's, uh, let's wrap up on this question here. Cause I think this would be great to kind of hear what your guys' insights are. I'd love to know what, what you guys feel about this. Michael way asked a great question and Michael was on the last master stream. So I appreciate you hopping on regularly, dude. Um, but he says, what, how do you take your brand to the next level? He says, is it necessary to start selling a course or product um, to see you as an expert? He says, that, like, aside from going live consistently and connecting, helping people on the daily, what was the thing for you guys that took, you know, your brand to the next level if there was one thing? So if we can maybe take content creation Ooh. out of it, is there something else that made a big difference? I know for me, it was networking outside of the internet. So it was like, it was life hacking uh, social media to put, to position yourself as this authority. And then it was literally just getting out and shaking. It's like Jeremy said, start local, uh, like just getting out and shaking people's hands in real life, because then those people in real life, they, they look up, you look, they look you up on social media and you have so much content and your brand is positioned so well, they go, Oh, this guy must be the expert. And then they, they tell their friends and so on and so forth. So the biggest change for me to go from content creation to make that really transition to make money and, and impact um, was networking out off offline, no doubt. Hmm. Totally. Yeah, I would build on that. And of course, relationships are key. And to speak to Jeremy's point about like having notes and being willing to teach that to other people, be willing to take the notes from other people and like get a rock solid mentor or someone that is going to blast your limiting beliefs so that you know that fear is a good thing and you know kind of do have that support um yeah so mentorship you, is just i can't yeah. not mention it <laughs> you don't have to reinvent the wheel either hannah because it's like i can't tell you the number of people's funnels that i've went through and like kind of like screenshotted the whole thing and like trying to figure out how to do it because they already did it man i don't need to do it twice <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm like sign up for email list, you know, saving the copy. All Dude, that I, I, I go down so many webinars. Like I have so many sequences. Like this I'm is like built my business. Recording. Dude, if I went through, every, I've gone through hundreds of funnels of screenshots, bro. That is yeah. so funny. I'm telling you guys, Jeremy pegged it, man. Like, don't make it harder on yourself. Like, mm -hmm. just do that. It already so works. Funny. It's so true, dude. Right. Right. I, I agree. I agree. Let's come back to the original point though. Like, do not just copy and paste. Cause I see that. And it's mm. like, this is not your voice. Since when do you mm. say bro? So take templates, take mentorship, see the wheel that works and put in your voice and all right. the stuff that we talked about before. <laughs> Absolutely. No, that's, that's totally true. I, I, I just mean like you see a method that works, right. it, but it needs right. to be unique right. to you as well. hundred percent. I'm on the same level as you, bro. I get it. I'm picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> you catching when I'm spitting at you, man. I got it. Going to the next level for me is always about strategic partnerships. Mm. I learned that process in sales, right? If I could find somebody that served the same general market that I did, that did a different service that I could build a relationship with and know, like, and trust that I could recommend them to my clients. If I built that relationship with them, then, well, it works the same way on social media, right? Hector, you and I connected early, early on through Arnie, right? Strategic partnerships. Guess what? I got an invite to be on this in front of all of you guys' audience. And I didn't know these other three people, right? Strategic partnerships. Get yourself on somebody else's stage and then serve those people. Yeah. So, when, so Landon, big. You're like the, uh, you're like the live stream sensei. You just come in and you just even totally lay something down. We're all like, wow, he's so right. <laughs> you'll watch, watch. I would, I would connect. I would encourage you to connect because you'll find that happening quite often uh, with, uh, with Landon's live videos. There's a, a reason he's got over a thousand hours of content. Is that what you said? Just in our main group. Oh Lord. Wow. I just, I thought I'd put a lot of content down. Mm, I need to get on a different level. Here's the deal, right? So in sales, let, let me, give me, give me two minutes to break this down. I learned how to be a sales guy, right? Like if you stayed on the phone with me long enough, you bought period, like all of the psychological mind fuckery. And then one day I had a 348 in the morning, I'm staring at myself in the mirror and I'm like, I fucking hate you. I don't like my relationships. I don't like work. I don't like you. This sucks. And I had a huge shift and I went about changing how I went and got clients. And it all came back to a selfish thing, just being me, right? Well, 
what I eventually became was a conversationalist. If they could get through my filters of, yeah, I would like to hang out with Bob at a barbecue, then we could move on and talk about the business thing. So I'm a conversationalist and I've got this weird, crazy persona that is truly who I am. And people seem to eat it up. Facebook lives for me is so much easier. I don't script anything. So I just go on and riff and people love it. Right. So I've kept it in our main group. There's a couple on our business page, but by building strategic partnerships and having people on and doing interviews and Friday night live has been a Joe Rogan style show for 48 weeks now. And many of those are four or five hour long shows. So it's, it doesn't take very long to build the content. Right. And it's all in communicating like how I kind of feel about this because I'm not watching the comments. It's the five of us having a conversation. Mm -hmm. Whereas the way I do it, because I needed to have conversations with my marketplace, it's me and them having a conversation, but me up on live so I can have a conversation with all of them at the same time. And it doesn't take very long to create that kind of content. Now, the first thing I tell everybody is, is you don't got to do that. Like that's nuts, but it front loaded our everything right now. I don't have to do that very often. That needs to be on a t-shirt somewhere, man. Mind fuckery. <laughs> Mind fuckery without the douche canoery. Uh, <laughs> hey guys, I want you guys to, uh, to get something out of this too. So very quickly share uh, where they can find you. And uh, you know, if you've got uh, a 10, 15 second, you know, promo or, or a call to action, you know, we're all marketers here. So if they want to learn more and dive into what you guys do, where can they find you? Let's uh, Landon, why don't you jump in and just share it really quickly where they can. Find sure. You. If, if you think that I'm interesting, find me at getting clients without being salesy. That's our main Facebook group. If you don't answer the questions, my wife won't let you in. Um, <laughs> right. If you want to learn how to understand your marketplace so you can develop the messaging and the actual offer that they need to hear and a filtration system. So you don't have to go out and do the prospecting. They come to you ready, willing, and they want to start now and they know what they're going to pay. Um, we have a course. It's a thousand bucks. Go through the free group to find that. Boom. Getting clients That's without being salesy. I'm tagging uh, all the, uh, all the links up here in the description as well. Marshall, where, where do they find you? You're muted. You're muted. Hold on. Go ahead. Am I unmuted now? Yeah, you're, you're unmuted. good. Man, 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 I felt bad for a second. Uh, you guys can find me at, at Marshall Dillon. You guys just connected my Facebook page. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm up showing up every day. And if you guys want content that's going to make you motivated and inspired and literally just give you the permission and hold the space for you to like start to believe in yourself again, and not only that, for you to start to believe that you can crush it, then just seriously just follow me on Facebook or reach out and connect with me. Like I have more to send you. I have something I'll sell you eventually, but just come and connect with me. I want to know who you are and I want to know how I can help you. I love it. I dig it. I dig it. Uh, Jeremy, what about you? Uh, Hannah can go first. I'll go last, man. All Ladies right. First. Hannah, you want to jump in? Oh, you're muted too. You're muted. I also have a Facebook group. Dream life is real life is all you really need to know. There's it's, the group is longer, but look for the group. Dream life is real life. And I am seeing like more questions about like, how do I get started? How do I package myself? And that really is my zone of genius is taking what you've already got, what you've already interested in and scaling it so that you've got an, an income. So drop me a private message. If you do want to talk more about that, like Marshall said, I am eager to get to know more of you and what your passion projects and dream life will look like. Boom. <clears throat> wrap us up here jeremy take us home all right so uh, i have a company called command your brand media we help people get booked on top rated podcasts um if we're out of your price range which we are for quite a few people then we actually have a we have a course coming out on the 12th which is actually going to teach you how to implement that in your own business and uh if you want to start getting yourself booked now and get on the list to find out more about that we have a checklist to be a great podcast guest over at commandyourbrand.media slash checklist Com commandyourbrand.media slash checklist all right, I'm going to put that up. All right, guys. Can, can, I, can I just add one thing? Yep. And it's real, really quick. I wasn't going to because I'm fucking, oh, I'm not doing this anymore. But because it's actually a really great resource, I'll give you this. But just know I don't teach on this anymore. If you guys go to time2storytell.com, 
time to storytell.com. I have, I literally have a, a completely free personal branding course that's there. It's how to use your own personal story now and then how to build a brand around it. It's a four point four part video series. So I'll give you guys that, that gold nugget if you guys are watching, but I don't have anything on the back end. Like I'm not going to be doing branding anymore, but it's an excellent resource. Time to storytell.com. I love it. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in and uh, we'll see y'all on next week's master stream. Peace.